Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Monorat discard deck featuring a few madness synergies and other cards that care about discarding cards. So let's take a look at our creatures first. And as you'll notice, our creature curve is incredibly low as we have a bunch of one drops and other cards we can potentially put in play for free or cast for zero mana, including Arclight Phoenix and Hollow One. And even at 1 mana, our Blazing Rootwalla has Madness for 0 mana, meaning that if we discard this card, we can exile it instead, and then cast it for its Madness cost instead of putting it into our graveyard. So if we have our Rootwalla in hand, we can discard it to one of our many discard effects, and then cast it for 0 mana to still get a lot of value out of it. And then it's a 1-1 one, one creature that for a red mana gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, that we can only activate once each turn. Then we also have the full playset of Flameblade Adapts, a 1-2 with Menace for 1 mana, saying whenever we cycle or discard a card, the Adapt gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, so it can get a lot of evasive damage in if we can play it early. And then the final 1-drop is Dragon's Rage Channeler, a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, saying whenever we cast a non-creature spell we get to surveil 1, meaning we can take a look at the top card of our library and put it into our graveyard if we want to, so that's an excellent way to potentially put Arclight Phoenix in our graveyard, and just in general gives us a lot of card selection over the next draw step. And then if we achieve Delirium, meaning if we have four or more card types among cards in our graveyard, card types include Instant, Sorcery, Land, Creature, Artifact, Enchantment, Planeswalker, there's even Tribal on Arena, so those are all card types. And in this particular build we have five different card types between Instant, Land, Sorcery, Creature and Artifact, so we can pretty consistently get to Delirium with the deck. And then the channeler will get plus 2 plus 2, it gains flying and has to attack each combat if able. So if we can turn our 1 drop into a 3-3 three, three flyer, that's going to be a very big deal. So the channeler is great in a deck with a lot of instants and sorceries like this one. And then at 4 mana we already mentioned Arclight Phoenix, a 3-2 with flying and haste, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've cast 3 or more instant and sorcery spells this turn, we can return Arclight Phoenix from our graveyard to the battlefield for free. So between the many discard effects and the surveil on Channeler, we can often put our Arclight Phoenix in the graveyard, and then around turn 3, turn 4, we can usually get it back from the graveyard by casting a bunch of spells in the same turn. And then rounding out our creatures, we've got Hollow One, a 4-4 artifact creature Golem, that costs 2 generic mana, less to cast for each card we've cycled or discarded this turn. So we can often cast it for just 1 or 0 mana, and then it also has cycling itself for 2 mana, although we won't be using that very often. Maybe that's a way to enable Delirium at instant speed to grow the Dragon's Rage Channeler, but for the most part we're happy to cast the Hollow One on the cheap, and between our many discard effects we can often cast a 1 mana Hollow One on turn 3, or maybe even a 0 mana Hollow One on turn 3, and then we can cast multiples in the same turn, which can lead to some very fun turns. And then taking a look at our non-creature spells, of course we do need some enablers to discard cards in the first place. And at one mana there's Faithless Looting, get to draw two and then discard two. Also has flashback so we can replay it out of the graveyard for three mana. Then we've got a bit of cheap removal with Play with Fire, dealing two damage to any target. And if a player is dealt damage this way we also get to scry one. So it's a close decision whether or not you include Unholy Heat in the one drop slot as opposed to Play with Fire. They both have their own advantages, of course Unholy Heat can potentially deal more damage with Delirium, but can only target Planeswalkers and Creatures, whereas Play With Fire can potentially burn the opponent out, which is also a big part of our game plan. 
Then at 2 mana we've got a full play set of Cathartic Reunion. As an additional cost we have to discard 2 cards to draw 3. So between the many Madness cards in the deck or Arclight Phoenix, we've got a lot of cards we're actively wanting to discard. And since our curve is also very low, we usually don't need more than 3 or 4 lands in play. So any future lands we can also discard to Reunion. And then Faithless Salvaging is another great one, a 2 mana instant that lets us discard a card and draw, and it also has a rebound, so if we cast it from our hand, so we can exile it as it resolves, and at the beginning of our next upkeep, we may cast it from exile without paying its mana cost. So that's an excellent way for us to potentially cast 3 spells in the same turn to return our client Phoenix, since we can cast Salvaging on turn 2, then on turn 3 we get to cast the additional copy for free, which also counts towards our client Phoenix, and then we only need to cast 2 more spells with 3 mana to potentially return our client Phoenix from our graveyard to the battlefield. And then it's also an instant speed way to potentially grow the Flameblade Adept or put a Blazing Root Walla into play, which is kind of unique. And then we also have the full play set of Fiery Temper, a 3 mana instant dealing 3 damage to any target, and it also has Madness for 1 mana, so if we discard it we can essentially cast a Lightning Bolt, which is quite nice. And then last but not least, two copies of Finale of Promise, which is another great way to return our client Phoenix, as it's a Mythic Rare Sorcery, saying we may cast up to one target instant card and or up to one target sorcery card from our graveyard, each with mana value X or less, without paying their mana costs. So if we play Finale for X equals 1, we could get back Faithless Looting as our sorcery and play with Fire as our instant, but more often than not we'll cast it for X equals 2, that way we can also get back Reunion as our sorcery and Faithless Salvaging as our instant. So then we can potentially discard and draw a whole bunch of cards to enable our various synergies, and if we cast Finale, by default if we get back to Instants and Sorceries, we will be able to get back our Arclight Phoenix as we'll have cast 3 Instants and Sorceries total. And then our mana base is very straightforward, 18 basic mountains. So if you already happened to have 4 copies of Arclight Phoenix from back in the day, the deck is relatively budget friendly, with only Arclight Phoenix and Finale as your mythics, and then Hollow One and Faithless Looting as your rares, everything else is commons and uncommons. Then some other cards worth mentioning that could fit into the deck include the new 2 mana Geist Blaster from Alchemy, which has some discard synergy, can potentially seek an instant or sorcery, and our count should be high enough for that to work. Could also play with Seasoned Pyromancer at 3 mana as another way to discard, although it is an extra creature and we do need to keep our instant and sorcery count high enough if we want cards like the Dragon Rage Channeler to work consistently, and the Finale plus Phoenix package is also important. So we don't have a ton of room for additional creatures, but the Pyromancer is another nice discard outlet, and if you're empty-handed and cast the Seasoned Pyromancer you can draw two, which is also similar to Faithful Salvaging if you're empty-handed, so that's another neat synergy to keep in mind. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. I could play Rootwalla on turn one. Although it's a nice one to discard to the salvaging, so I think I'm gonna hang on to it. Discard one on turn two, and then maybe again on turn three, and then I can potentially cast a cheap hollow one if we picked up another discard effect in the meantime. Facing a blue deck. Could also reunion, but I think I'll keep reunion for next turn to maybe enable hollow one, and then go for the salvaging which we can play at instant speed. All right, I'll let the opt resolve, but I'll put a stop on end step so I can make sure I resolve the salvaging. In case my opponent's playing counter spells. And cast that for free. Phoenix, another good one to discard, so... Our draw is coming along nicely. Now for me to get back Arclight Phoenix next turn, I would have to draw a 1 mana instant or sorcery. So... I guess I might as well... Discard Phoenix here. Can still discard Rootwalla with the Cathartic Reunion anyway. Another Phoenix. And a land. So it is still possible for us to get it back. And then I'll play a free hollow one as well, so pretty explosive turn. Especially if we can find a looting or a play with fire. We cannot. Alright, so 
I'll attack for one, play Flame Blade and a free Hollow One, and then next turn with the Finale, if I draw lands, I'll be able to get back enough stuff to cast Phoenix times two. Probably should have cast a Flame Blade first in case of a counter spell here, but it's gonna be a Fairy Vandal. Serpent playing kind of a blue flash curiosity deck. There's the Curiosity. Could also see Curious Obsession as another one mana aura to draw cards. Potent's probably playing quite a few counter spells and bound spells. So it's not a guarantee that this finale resolves. Alright, we did not draw the land, so right now finale doesn't do much for us. But I can Cathartic Reunion, discarding Phoenix, Fiery Temper. And then I could cast Fairy Temper for one mana. Targeting Fairy Vandal, I guess, is still pretty safe since it's unlikely that they can draw two cards at instant speed. That worked. And I get to draw three. Alrighty, so opponents concedes. We would have been able to cast Faithless Looting. And then that would have been our third instant or sorcery, so that would have allowed me to get back triple Arc Light Phoenix even, so yeah, this game was pretty over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn one, we can interact with Play with Fire. Turn two, probably gonna set up Salvaging, so turn three we can cast a free Hollow One with a Reunion after casting the Rebound Salvaging with maybe a Fiery Temper for one mana thrown in the mix. So we'll pass, put in blue-reds, maybe a Jeskai control deck. And then could discard Play with Fire to the Faithful Salvaging right now. Alright, Blazing Rutwala could be our next discard. Can play that for free. And then Cathartic Reunion could discard Blazing Rutwala Fiery Temper and we can cast the Fiery Temper with Madness. That seems fine. And then I'll have a zero mana Hollow One coming up as well. So not a bad turn three, although a sweeper could still be quite backbreaking. All right, triple hollow one. There we go. Our hand got a lot more exciting. Put onto with a lightning helix on Rutwala. That's fine. Just gotta kill them before they can cast the Wrath of God. Opponent passes with three mana. So how aggressive do we want to get? I could play Dragon Rage Channeler, Pump Root while I cast Play with Fire, but I think I might be overextending into a Wrath. So instead I'll just attack with the team, Pump Root Walla, and then keep the Channeler as kind of a leftover here. Now if they could have a Prismari Command, which can kill the root wall or destroy a hollow one, but then it's less likely that it would have a sweeper incoming, so that's probably fine. Alright, opponent actually has a Prismari command, so now I'm more compelled to play the channeler. And then we can still play with Fire at instant speed if needed. Although maybe better to keep it as a way to get back Arc Light Phoenix if we happen to surveil it into the graveyard or discard it. 
So the Jeskai deck putting up a good fight so far with some important interaction. But they're still facing double hollow one and a 3-3 channeler. Uh, land number four. Narset Pardor Veils is quite good against our deck as it prevents us from drawing off our various looting effects. But with only one mana left over, it seems like this play with fire is going to be lethal. So we'll deal two damage upstairs, and I don't really expect any interaction here. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, so triple hollow one gets it done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keep. Now, Faithless Looting is not actually a card we usually want to cast on turn one, as the longer we wait on it, the more likely it can return Arclight Phoenix by casting three spells, enable Madness, and cast like a Fiery Temper, or let us cast a Hollow One for one mana, or potentially for free. Opponent also with Faithless Looting of Sacred Foundry, so potentially a Graveyard combo deck. So it could be one of the Dragonstorm variants with Mizzix's Mastery to cast it out of the graveyard. Or a Reanimator deck with Elish Norn. Alright, so turn two. Now I could looting discard Fiery Temper, but again, if I can save that to get back Arclight Phoenix, that's better. So I think I'm just going to Reunion discarding Land and Phoenix, and then next turn with another one mana spell. I could get back Phoenix and cast a Fairy Temper as well. Thought C is gonna have a look. So that could mess with our plans of getting back an Arclight Phoenix. If we still had one mana open and our opponent took like Fiery Temper, we could actually still cast it for one mana, as we see the madness here. So yeah, to get back Phoenix I would have to draw another Fiery Temper, another Looting, or a Play with Fire, which is not impossible. I think what I'll do is cast one Looting, and then if we don't find one of those aforementioned cards I'll still keep up Faithful Salvaging instead. And then for now discard probably two lands, and then... I think I have to cast a Salvaging over Channeler, but that's a close call. Because if I play Channeler now, then that's probably my entire turn, and then next turn I'm not going to get Phoenix back. Whereas this way I can cast a Salvaging, and then we should be able to get back Phoenix next turn between another Salvaging and Looting. So I might actually have to discard Channeler as her opponent flashes back looting. And double Velomech is discarded, so no Umburial rights to worry about just yet. And yeah, I think I get rid of Channeler, strangely enough. And then really hope to draw into another Arclight Phoenix we can discard to get it back. So cast this discard land. Finale is not bad. And reunion. So I could take a bit of a risk here, cast a reunion, discarding salvaging and looting, hang on to finale. Or I can go for looting and then salvaging afterwards, or maybe reunion, we'll see. To guarantee getting back Phoenix, and there we go. Second Phoenix plus a free Rootwalla. That's much better. And then I want to hang on to Finale, so we'll discard Reunion instead. Okay, so get back double Phoenix. And hopefully our opponent doesn't have like a, a late for dinner to reanimate their creatures since Elish Norn's gonna be hard to beat. Uh-oh. Godless Shrine untapped. And late for dinner. Get back Elish Norn. Yeah, that's gonna make it real hard. So now my plan is gonna be to burn my opponent out, but they're at 8, plus they have a food token. Getting back Arclight's not gonna do anything for me. 
I've got a fiery temper in the graveyard and a play with fire in hand. Yeah, my options aren't looking great. I think I probably discard a play with fire. Although it is two points of burn, which at this point seems like my most realistic win condition. But I also don't want to get rid of my finale, which can maybe get back like a fiery temper if I get to five mana. Hmm. It's close. Maybe I still discard play with fire here. Rutwala doesn't do much for me. So I could flashback looting. And discard looting and Rutwala. And I just want to keep hitting my land drops pretty much. No point in casting the Rutwala. And then next turn I could finally for three get back. Fiery Temper plus a Sorcery. But our opponent had a virtual 11 life. Yeah, I mean, Arc Light Phoenix, great card, but dealing 7 to Elish Norn doesn't seem realistic. And uh, getting back Triple Phoenix, while great, is not going to win me the game here. Maybe I should just wait another turn so I can get back a Cathartic Reunion and actually cast it by discarding two cards and drawing three to find more burn spells. And then for now I guess it doesn't hurt to flash back looting. Maybe find another Fiery Temper Weekend Madness. Alright, we can. Sir opponent currently at 8 life. And Burial Rites on Velomachus is going to speed up their clock significantly. So now we're probably going to die before we can burn them out. Even finds a thrilling discovery to gain 2 life. So we can actually finally to get back triple Arclight Phoenix, but they're just going to die one by one to Elishnorn. So our deck did what it was designed to do, but sadly so did our opponents. So Elishnorn a little bit difficult for our deck to overpower. But this is potentially a situation where having access to the Unholy Heat as opposed to Play With Fire could have paid off as we would have been able to maybe combine it with another burn spell to take out Elishnorn. And it only takes one turn of Arclight Phoenix getting back from the graveyard to kill them. And I guess Lightning Axe, also one of those cards that is useful at taking out high toughness creatures, maybe in combination with the Madness on Fiery Temper as well. Alright, good game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hand seems good. Hopefully get to see a bit of Flame Blades adapt in action. Play turn one and then... Don't know if I want to cast a looting turn two or if I want to hang on to it. So set up Arclight Phoenix, but finally seems like a great way to do that, so... Probably fine to cast a looting. Play land first in case I discard a Fiery Temper so I can cast it for one mana. And then Rootwalla and Phoenix can go. And we can play the Rootwalla. And hit for three. And then next turn Reunion. It's going to be a nice follow-up. Could see a Fatal push on the Flame Blade. Or maybe a Cling to Dust on my Arclight Phoenix. All right, that worked.
And yeah, there's the cling to dust. So luckily I still have an Arc Light Phoenix to discard here, but that's a very good answer to the Phoenix. Is so opponent on blue-black control? It's going to consider main phase, maybe to hit their land drop. And a search for Ascanta. Alright. So, a reunion, discard Phoenix land, and then I can still pump Rootwalla. And then we're looking for an instance to also get back with Finale. Like a Faithful Salvaging will do. Question now is do I want to commit a Channeler to the board and potentially lose it to a Sweeper or just pump the Rootwalla? I think we've got enough creatures on the board. And then if they do cast a Sweeper, I can follow up with a Channeler into some more discard effects. Opponent has to shock in a Watery Grave to cast Meat Hook Massacre for two. Alright. And then now could go Channeler plus Faithless Salvaging. That way I can set up my Phoenix for next turn. And then I'm probably still fine playing land number four since I'm gonna need to finale for two most likely. There's definitely an argument for casting Salvaging main phase in case I find another 1-drop I want to cast right away. Right. Opponent eliminates Channeler. In response, we can still Surveil. Fiery Temper. I guess that's not terrible since I can just cast it for free. And that also gets back Phoenix, so I can hang on to Finale a little bit longer. Although there is a risk of a discard spell. I guess we'll discard Temper now. Another looting. And draw Arc Light Phoenix, perfect. So now I can reunion discarding looting Phoenix, get back double Phoenix. And play a free Hollow One, why not? So despite getting one exiled, still found two authors. And now we might be able to burn them out with Finale and play with fire. Alright, Drown to kill Hollow One. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is okay. Missing some creatures, but we can probably draw into them. And then I'm gonna hang on to Faithless Looting, so we can maybe combine it with Fiery Temper as removal on turn 2. If not, I might wait a little bit longer. Alright, so I could Reunion... Although I don't really want a Reunion discarding Fiery Temper when we cannot Madness it. So I could Looting discarding one Temper plus something else and then just burn our opponents. Try and hit some more land drops. Or I could Reunion anyway and then... Not sure what I'm discarding here. So I think Looting is probably still fine. Alright, Arc Lights and Temper discarded. So won't be getting back the Phoenix this turn, or probably not even next turn. But lots of fiery tempers to go around, so ideally we find land number three. Opponent playing a blink deck, probably featuring the new four drop from Alchemy. Flame Blade a little bit late to the party, but might still be worth playing. Or I could discard it to Cathartic Reunion. Keep digging for more lands to eventually finale to get back Phoenix. And then I could reunion discarding Flame Blade plus another reunion. 
because our opponent's probably going to play a bunch more blockers, so the Adept is going to struggle to get past the wall. And I might want to keep my burn spells. Alright, land is good. And then I'll hang on to the Faithless looting. Next turn we can Salvaging plus Fiery Temper. And then... Things are looking good for Finale, potentially. Opponent with a Neoform, getting a Grizzled Huntmaster. Another new Alchemy card, which can let them tutor up a creature. Okay, so I could Finale for X equals 2, although there's no great instant to get back since Fairy Temper's 3 mana. I could discard double Fiery Temper to kill the Huntmaster, and that also gets back Arclight Phoenix, or I could just go upstairs, which would deal 9 damage total, put my opponent at 8, and then I still have a Finale as Leftover, which isn't bad. Kind of like that idea. And then I can also play a Flame Blade. Would have been great to find another Arclight Phoenix here, but we'll have to settle for one copy. And then next turn I could potentially finally for X equals 3, get back Fiery Temper and Cathartic Reunion. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so the fancy new Blink deck, still beaten by some cool Madness synergies. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's got lots of early interaction, some looting effects, although no creatures or Arclight Phoenix to discard, so we're hoping to kind of get lucky with our first couple draws, which may or may not work out. I'll try it, I guess. And then hopefully it's a matchup where play with fire early is good. Against a red aggro deck, that's certainly the case. Do I want to kill a ringleader is a question. Probably. So this is... Most likely a Burning Tree Emissary, Anax, Embercleave deck. Phoenix is not a bad draw. So I can Reunion discard Phoenix plus something else. I think I have to get rid of Faithless Looting since it is card disadvantage at the end of the day and we don't have anything amazing to discard to it. And then keep my removal and a backup Reunion to enable future synergies. Alright. So next turn I can play a 1-mana Hollow One pretty easily, which does a good job of blocking the Burning Tree. Times two. Still haven't seen the Haste creature. There it is, Magda. So Perpetual Haste thanks to the Ringleader. And a Fervent Champion. Okay, so opponent can easily Ember Cleave for 2-mana next turn. I'm just going to Reunion, discarding some lands, and then take it from there. So next turn, we can cast a couple burn spells and get back Arclight. And then... Yeah, there's Annex. At least it doesn't have haste. And we'll take out Magda here. Do they also have a burn spell here? Maybe a frostbite? Still a reason not to block Fervent Champion. Right, it's gonna be a Rimrock Knight bumping Fervent Champion. And our opponent gets a token from Annex. Now we can kill Annex at the very least. So I'll have to do all this main phase if I want to get back Arclight Phoenix. So looting discards Fiery Temper plus a land. Madness Fiery Temper killing Annex. 
and then probably play with fire another creature here but I can maybe wait and see what else we draw so I could play a dragon rage channeler for playing the play with fire here get an extra surveil maybe hit another phoenix if we're lucky And then we lose the Delirium, so I don't think Hollow One is attacking. Just send a Phoenix. So their opponent stop decking. They can still attack with the entire team here to push some damage. And then I could take four. Keep the channeler for now. It's probably fine. Ooh, and a chain whirler can finish off the channeler anyway. So I'm a little surprised, I guess they didn't main phase it, but Faithful salvaging the draw. Or we could flash back looting. If I'm empty handed, salvaging essentially draws a card. So I guess I could play land, looting, and then salvaging afterwards. Sure. Ooh, double root walla for free. Glad those didn't get swept up by Chain Whirler. And then I could salvaging now. And does a phoenix attack? I think so. Can block Chain Whirler. And then we'll have to wait and see what to do with the Root Walla. So let's say we trade one. Next turn I have seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the Rimrock Knight also cannot block. So what if I just take 4 down to 2, I could die to a burn spell or another pump spell, but let's say we don't. Then next turn I could pump both Root Wallas, so that's 13, still 1 damage short. So I think I'll play it safe and then block with at least one Root Walla. Do I want to block with a second? I think so. If the game goes a little bit longer, it probably favors us. Still want to keep up the pressure with our client because if they do top deck and ember cleave, we could be in trouble. But yeah, it's kind of tricky to decide how aggressive we want to be. All right, so I can finally get back a couple burn spells. That seems good. Does that kill my opponents? Seven plus five points of burn, not quite. So, in terms of sorcery. It's either looting or reunion. So I guess we could go for looting since I cannot cast a reunion. And then play with fire, in which case I can finally for X equals one. And play with fire, probably killing the Rimrock Knights. Okay, found another Fiery Temper, which I'm happy to discard. And Reunion. And then we'll have a free Hollow One incoming. So I think it's safe enough to just point this upstairs now. Hit for seven. Play another Hollow One. We've got two blockers to their two attackers. We don't die to an Ember Cleave or a single burn spell. Another Fervent Champion is actually not bad. 
So safest play I can make is to chum block with a root voila. And that should be game. All right. So close one here against Monorad Aggro. Drew a lot of our burn spells and the one Phoenix to keep up the pressure while Hollow One played defense. So yeah, overall, got to see a nice variety of matchups. And this Monorad discard deck is a lot of fun to play. And if you already happen to have Arclight Phoenix from back in standard, it's quite budget friendly to put together as well. So probably not a deck that will take you to rank 1 Mythic, but still a fun time and certainly good enough to do your daily challenges. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.